Hi, I'm Rita Lavati Sharoma, and this is Nordstrom and its Sustainable Future. So at Nordstrom, we love our customers, we love the environment, we support the community, and we're also concerned about the impacts that we have on the world around us. This can be social impacts, environmental impacts, economic impacts. Um, so today I'm going to be uh, um, addressing the threats that Nordstrom faces in the future of the apparel industry and just identifying some strategies that we can implement to address these threats and turn them into opportunities to give us a good strategic place in the market, making us an industry leader in the apparel industry, the high end of the apparel industry. So first, um, here are some threats. The first one is limited resources. So in the future, we can see it's foreseeable that we can um, there will be a limited amount of resources. The price of oil per barrel could go up from fifty to five hundred dollars. We're not sure. Um, water could be limited. Cotton could be limited. Um, so we kind of have to take that into account. Um, see what North should can do to realize what resources we're using and. Um, how we can stop being so reliant on these limited resources. Another threat is change in consumer behavior. So in the future, consumers could be more inclined to purchase sustainable products. Um, for example, a Juicy Couture customer today wants their velour tracksuit. In the future, they might not only just want that tracksuit that they wear on Saturday morning, they want that tracksuit to be sustainable environmentally good. They want to be able to bring it in and be able to say, hey, Juicy, I want to return this and get maybe a percent off of my next purchase because it should be recyclable. Um, so just that change in consumer perception and um, behavioral traits to not only caring about high-end quality products, but also caring about products that are quality products, but are also good for the environment. Um, the third threat is regulatory changes. Um, these are often hard to predict, um, but the U.S. could say the apparel industry can only use a certain amount of cotton, or we can't use any cotton. Um, they could require us to give reports saying how much resources we are using, and if we're using too much, they might cite and fine us. Um, so just addressing these possible regulations that could come up and seeing how we can prepare for that. The fourth threat is disruptive events. Um, and what I mean by this is an example would be Marc Jacobs. Um, media picks up on Marc Jacobs, a uh, high-end brand that Nordstrom houses, has used dog fur in their faux fur jackets. Media catches it, public interest catches it, consumers aren't happy. They start thinking, why am I buying this product? Why am I buying these high-end products when they're using dog fur in their full fur jackets. And that can have a negative reaction on Marc Jacobs and as well as Nordstrom since we house that brand. So just looking at how certain disruptive events, um, cultural anomalies can change, um, can threat, threaten Nordstrom and also change consumer behavior. And so here are some of the strategies that I'm gonna be talking about just to quickly run through them. There's the value chain index, um, there's resource alternatives, green marketing, and a shift in institutional logic within our company and the apparel industry. The first strategy is a value chain index. So Nordstrom would create and implement their own value chain index for the high-end apparel industry. And this would be different from the HIG index from the SAC, or say Puma's own index that they use. This would be different because we have our own supply chain that is very different from say Puma or Patagonia. Um, we have our own private label, but that is only a small percentage of our overall merchandise offering. So we have a huge supply chain. Um, and sometimes it's hard to be accountable for all the raw inputs, the processes, the practices that our um, suppliers um, do for us. So with this value chain index, we'll be able to measure our reliance on raw materials and inputs, um, see um, how we can improve the management in our supply chain, see the risks that can be avoided in our supply chain. Um, so a quick example would be, I'm entering a Nordstrom store. There's a BCBG dress, and there's a Free People dress. They're both the same price. I think they're equally as cute. Um, but the VCI could do for us is offer a point system where one dress is more damaging to the environment than the other. So 
the BCBG dress would have a point system of 38, whereas the free people dress would have a point system of 15. That makes it easier for me as a sustainable conscious customer. I want the free people dress because it has 15 points, so therefore I don't want to buy a dress that's more harmful to the environment. So that could cre also create this competition and innovation within the brands that we house. Um, and just so they can see what they can do to improve their own sustainable practice while following our value chain index. <coughs> resource alternatives. So looking at the threat of limited resources, um, energy could possibly not be as available and it could um, raise in costs. So looking at the raise in input costs, um, for example, our Honolulu store, we have a stored ice um, system in our facility because during the day, instead of using air conditioning, we use that um, during high energy um, hours because Honolulu has high energy costs, one of the highest in the nation. Um, on top of that, we could also improve. We could install solar panels to offset our energy usage. Um, so instead of um, being dependent on non-renewable sources of energy, we can count on an installation of solar panels. If we are not thinking about our Honolulu location, we're thinking about maybe our Seattle location. We can look at wind turbines and hydropower to power our facilities instead of using solar power because it's not sending all the time here. So looking at those resource alternatives and thinking about uh, making that investment now since Nordstrom has about um, a billion in cash, we can make that investment and then hopefully reduce costs in the future, especially if we can see our input costs rising, possibly. Green marketing is the next strategy we want to implement. So just looking at this, this is the bottom of our web page. And you can see our Nordstrom Cares here, and we have a little tidbit of California Supply Chains Act, which we follow and want our suppliers to follow as well. Um, and just looking at Patagonia, they have an environmentalism link right at the top. North Face has a whole square right on their whole page about four years of innovation exploration. And these are companies known for their environmental sustainable practice. They're known for having quality products and being very socially responsible. And as a, as a company, Norsham, we want to be socially responsible too. And we want our consumers to feel that we are socially responsible. <laughs> and if we have, say, like Saks Fifth, who maybe you can see there's not really anything going on with sustainable information, we're a step above them. But we want to be even more so. We want to be that industry leader. So just being a step above by having our green links at the bottom of our page maybe isn't good enough. Maybe we need to be like Whole Foods and really say what our mission and values are right on the home page. So this is on the left side of their home page. Very visible. Their consumers know what they're about. They get they can interact with them. They have a blog about how what they're doing and their um, mission and values. So if we want our consumers to see us um, as this high end company but also a green company, especially in the future where consumer preferences are changing, we want to make sure that we improve our communications culture change. So with all these strategies, nothing can happen if we don't change our own company culture. So the social norms within our company and our shared values that we share um, in our company must change before any of these strategies can be <coughs> implemented. So what I mean by that is there will need to be training. So with the VCI, with the point system, staff needs to know how to relay, how to relay that sustainable information to our customers, if they're confused about, you know, why is this more sustainable than this? What does this point system mean? Our staff needs to know, um, be prepared to share um, our sustainable values with our customers. Management needs to be prepared to share that knowledge with their staff, and so on. So just creating this um, shift in our institutional logic could possibly change the shift in the whole high-end apparel industry institutional logic. So just going back to the thought of how we want to be in a good strategic place in the apparel industry future. Um, we need to act as the industry leader. We need to show people that we can change um, the mindset of high-end companies like Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth, Bloomingdale's. Um, they can somehow implement our BCI as well or take 
um, action from it, um, and hopefully we can influence innovation. We want to leave business better than we found it, and hopefully we can influence others to do the same. Thank you. When you're, at the, when you're at a mall in Puget Sound area, the power is supplied by Bonneville or Puget Sound Energy, Tacoma Power. How can your investment, how would you invest to get different energy sources when you're solar if that's where you, what your power source is? Well, um, I was thinking since Nordstrom kind of has its own place on the mall, they could install it on top of their roof section. Um, currently, I know we, install LED lights and we change some light bulbs. Um, but even for wind and turbo, we can, um, Google doesn't have their own wind farms, but they source their energy in, so we could do that as well. Um, yeah, so solar panels, I was thinking in more like Honolulu locations where it's more of an entity, it's more disconnected from the mall itself, whereas in the Northwest, we would use this sourced energy. <laughs> we all do. I have a question about your culture change. What steps would you take to do that? That's a pretty monumental change for any corporation or company to take. How would exactly would you go about doing that? Yeah, well, first there needs to be a sense of urgency, um, especially since a lot of these strategies seem more long-term. A value chain index, we would have to hire someone like PricewaterhouseCoopers. We'd have to probably um, get help from the SAC, Global Reporting Initiative. Um, just creating that sense of urgency that we need to do this now so that we have the time to implement it. Um, that making sure there's no obstacles in the way. Um, so if people feel that they cannot be innovative, if people feel that they do not understand sustainability, those obstacles need to be removed. Um, just that transitional shift from training to how the company feels about itself to um, incorporating how the staff understands the VCI, how merchants understand the VCI, the, they see the benefits, they see the lack of risk with the VCI, um, that will all have to tie in. Because it, it'll be very hard for merchants to be like, why should I invest my time in this VCI where I can go to Neiman Marcus and sell my stuff there? Um, it's, it's kind of like you have to think of yourself as that industry leader. Um, and really create the sense of urgency that this needs to happen now so we're better off in the future. Um, so, yeah, I think most, mostly just creating a sense of urgency and really pushing um, the removal of obstacles. You had recommended a consumer-facing index, and I was curious to know if you've come across examples of other types of indices like this in the U.S. or possibly abroad that have been successful. Um, like the value chain index? Yes, with either clothing, apparel products, or with other types of consumer goods that have shown, yes, consumers really do care about this and they've been successful. Well, I know Puma with their index, they really show that they're the leading um, sportswear um, company just because they show that they care so much about their practices. They've really looked at how reliant they are at their resources um, and just how Patagonia has influenced also um, Walmart even. Um, if you can influence Walmart, you can influence anyone really, I think. So just um, these indexes, um, I think, show consumers that they're really serious. They're not just greenwashing almost. They're not just saying like sticking those like Fair Labor Association, like all these third party auditing things. And you're really creating something yourself. You're really making something customizable to you um, and are those companies scoring their products in the same way, in a consumer-facing type of way? They're more scoring, I think, in terms of pricing their externalized costs on the environment. So um, a certain dollar amount would go how much we're using water maybe in this tier, so in the raw materials um, production, so harvesting cotton, this is how much we're damaging the environment in terms of price costs. Um, compared to this other tier in our organization where we're manufacturing. Um, so just looking at the different tiers of the supply chain and seeing how much resources are used in each tier 
and how that can influence um, better products, better um, human rights, because labor is a big part of it too. Um, yeah. Yeah, question, um, kind of continuing on that. So you had mentioned that um, Nordstrom should create their own value chain index, but there's already indexes out there kind of going along what you were saying, like the Hig Index, which um, Nordstrom is participating in the Sustainable Apparel Coalition right now. Why are you recommending that they would create their own instead of go to a universal standard? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I was just thinking along the lines of us being different from Patagonia, where they make their products, they're their own brand. We have our own brand, but we also house these other brands with us so and we also use different materials from <laughs> furs to precious stones to leather different types of leather and that leads to different manufacturing processes so tanneries were probably different um, the collection of fur is probably like I'm sure Patagonia doesn't use fur but just those differences in how um, the way we gain materials um, especially in the high-end industry is very different and the way we manufacture materials I think is very different too so just looking at those contrast, I think it would be um, better for us to apply it to our high-end industry and our processes, and hopefully others will follow suit in um, our regard. Do you think there would be confusion with the consumer when they're looking at a Nordstrom value chain index versus a Patagonia index? What if they're trying to decide between a Columbia jacket that Nordstrom sells versus a Patagonia jacket, and the numbers are different? That's very true. Um, I would, um, <coughs> that's very tricky. I think along those lines, um, since Columbia, they use, they don't really use, are you the Columbia, if Columbia was in Nordstrom stores? Yeah. So they wouldn't really necessarily probably use the same materials, so they probably wouldn't even be on the same um, tiers as the other brands. Um, so maybe it wouldn't really make it, um, that much of a comparison, but that's a good question. Mostly just thinking about assessing the resources that certain brands use, so in the future looking towards like how consumer behavior might change to more sustainable options. If we evaluate how harmful these furs and these precious stones are to collect, those brands could possibly not even be using those materials anymore because of our index, um, because of how much we're pushing for sustainability. So. Do you think Nordstrom's should take this, uh, these good ideas and be proactive on how they market these products? For example, uh, a product that had a, uh, a favorable uh, PCI index would get more shelf space or more promotion in the, in the print ads, um, or would it just be up to the customer to decide? I personally think so. I think that um, is part of the reason why um, innovation is so important because you're kind of making these um, brands compete against each other. They want their products anyway in terms of surface level attractiveness. That's how they're competing. But now they have this other way to compete. Um, so this dress is going to get the cover because it's surface level cuter versus it's cuter, but it's also more sustainable. So I feel at Norsham we're very proud of our sustainable products. Um, we have our um, certain labels. Um, and I think that would be a good thing to do. Um, and I think that's how we would implement it. Um, do you have an order and timeline for implementation for these ideas? Um, as far as resources go, I think it would have to be a gradual shift, um, investing in solar power and hydropower um, and wind power. It would have to be this decrease. So one year we decrease 10%. We decrease our reliance on non-renewable sources of energy, and the next year we decrease another 10%. Um, I don't think that needs to be as drastic. Um, as far as the value chain index, um, I think that should be implemented in the next three years just because of the momentum um, this idea has gotten with Patagonia and the work they've done, and Puma with the work they've done. Um, and we really, since we want to be the industry leader, we want to be the first one, and we want to be the one that creates this shift in institutional logic within the high-end apparel industry. So we want to be that one that says, hey, we're taking responsibility, we're taking accountability for these inputs that we have, these suppliers that we have in our fast supply chain, and these other companies like Saks Fifth and Bloomingdale's are going to follow suit. 
So I think that should be implemented roughly within a fairly early um, time frame. And that's going to have to be the last question. So.